juicy. It's tomato season, and today we are making a double roasted tomato galette. That's right. Not once, but roasted twice to concentrate all those delicious juices into caramelly tomato yumminess. I can't wait. Let's get started. Ah, oh, I'm so hot. The oven's on. Preheated to 300 to roast those tomatoes. In the recipe, I'm calling for mixed tomatoes and you can use whatever looks the best. These are Romas, but I also have some really beautiful uh, cherry tomatoes. And I'm going to show you a trick for how to cut them. You just take two little deli container lids, you fill up the bottom and then sandwich the top and then take a very sharp knife and then just cut straight through. And now you have perfectly halved cherry tomatoes. Whenever you roast anything on a sheet tray, the outer edges of the sheet tray are going to cook faster than the very center. So if you have larger pieces of tomato, you wanna to put them on the outer edge and you wanna put your cherry tomatoes or your smaller tomatoes in the center. Now I'm going to season generously with sea salt. A lot of galette recipes that I looked at, um, people tell you to cut your tomatoes and then toss them with salt and pepper in a bowl and then strain out all the juices at the bottom and either discard it or use it for something else. And honestly, like my heart was aching when I saw people throwing the tomato juice away. Like, no, 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 that is not, that is not what we do on this show. We eat everything. And like, honestly, like that is so much flavor that you're just wasting. So that is why I wanted to double roast these tomatoes because they are super juicy. And if I put these tomatoes in the way that they are, they will completely sog out the dough. And I don't want that. Now we're just gonna drizzle them with a little bit of olive oil. And I have some freshly picked thyme that I'm gonna just scatter over the top. And now I'm gonna throw this into a 300 degree oven for about two hours. Depending on the juiciness of your tomatoes, it could take a little bit more time if they're super juicy and a little less time if they're not. Now we're ready to make the dough for the galette. What would Aaron do? Should I bake this up a notch? All right, the first thing we're gonna do is mix all of our dry ingredients. So I have all purpose flour and a little bit of whole wheat. Now I'm going to use some sea salt. This is one and a quarter teaspoons of sea salt. And then I'm just gonna put this in the processor and we will pulse to combine. Everything is nice and combined. Because I live in the tropics and because it's super hot, I have not mised my butter out because I want it to be frozen. This is rock hard butter. All right, so now I'm just gonna pour everything into the bowl and I've got my ice water and I'm gonna pour in a quarter of a cup, just four tablespoons. And I'm just gonna drizzle that over the top. And I've also got a tablespoon of apple cider vinegar. That will help keep everything nice and tender and it'll also give it a nice little uh, flavor boost and a little bit of a tang. And now I'm just gonna mix everything together with a spoon until everything comes together and there's no clumps. And you can tell that 
it's still pretty dry and that's my indication that I need to add a little bit more water. This is the point where you only add one tablespoon at a time until the dough holds its shape. So in the recipe I've written a third of a cup, which is five tablespoons, but I was holding on to that other tablespoon of water because if it was raining or really humid or there was a lot of moisture in the flour already, you may not need that extra tablespoon. And once you put it in, you can't take it out. And I don't want a really soggy dough. So again, I'm just gonna go ahead and toss this. It looks like it might hold its shape now. So I'm going to now go in with my hand. I think it's gonna hold its shape. Yep. Now I'm gonna pat this out into a sort of disc. You want to get this as close to a nice rolling shape as possible. The easiest way to do that is to gently wrap it and then just kind of pat it down and then tuck in the sides. And this is ready to go in the fridge at least three hours, but overnight is best. Everybody has their own way of rolling out pie dough. This is the way that I like to do it, so I will share it with you, but you know, there are a million other different ways you can do this. I like rolling it out onto parchment paper for a couple of different reasons. A, uh, the parchment, once you are rolling it out, you can actually easily turn it. You don't have to lift it off of the, the either the board or your, uh, your marble. The other thing is that because I'm gonna bake this on a parchment, on a sheet tray, this is actually my size guide. And so I just feel like it's the easiest way and I will know exactly when I need to stop rolling because the size of the pan is right here. I'm going to generously flour both the dough and the parchment. And then I've got another parchment I'm gonna lay over the top and then I will just start rolling. It's really cold and so it's not going to roll that easily right now. It's giving a little bit, I can feel it give. And if your dough is super hard, you can actually pound it with your rolling pin, but this is actually starting to roll easily. It's warming up because it's so hot in here. Okay, I just wanna make sure that nothing's sticking. I get a little bit more flour. And I like to roll from the middle and go out. And I think for the rest of it, I'm just gonna go without the parchment so I can see where I'm at. Now that we're fully rolled out, I am going to transfer this to a sheet tray and throw it in the refrigerator just to keep it cool while we get all the cheese grated and get everything set up to build a galette. It's building time. Okay, this is the fun part. So I wanna put down my cheeses first. So I'm gonna put my dry cheese, which is in this case, the Gruyere. I guess they're both dry. I wanna leave myself a couple of inches of border on the edges where we'll fold it over. This is gonna do a couple of things. It's actually going to waterproof the crust as it melts so that if there's any juices that come out of the tomatoes while they bake, it's not gonna sog out the crust. And I'm going to throw in a little bit of my garlic. I want to get that, those garlic juices mixed in with the cheese as it melts. I'm gonna put a little bit of parm, and that's just going to add a little bit more flavor and texture to the bottom layer. Now we can start with our tomatoes. And I'm gonna get a little bit of both kinds and then just sprinkle around, have fun, make pretty patterns. I feel like I'm going into a tomato daze. Juicy. Oh, they just look so good. 
Now, I think before I put the rest, I'm gonna sprinkle a little more garlic and get those nice and tucked in with all the tomatoes. And then as the tomatoes release a little bit more juice, they'll mingle with the garlic. Okay, now I'm just gonna give this sheet tray a little bit of a scrape. Get any accumulated juices and those oils. Drizzle that in there. That is all super concentrated flavor. I want to lick this sheet tray, but I will not, at least while the camera's rolling. So that would be on theme for this episode. Yeah, it would be very on theme. Really for any Sweet Heat episode, I think you'd probably expect that I would lick a sheet tray. That looks amazing. And now I'm just gonna sprinkle over a little bit more parm because obviously we need parm. And now we're going to fold this up. So this is like super easy. All we need to do is fold it in on itself and then just kind of fold that over just like that. And then pick up another edge and fold it over just like that. This is a very fat galette, as you would expect. I'm sure Josh is watching this edit thinking, wow, he's done it again. He's made a galette so fat that it can't even close. Now that we've done that, we want to egg wash the sides. This will make everything pretty. It's also going to be a little bit of glue so that everything holds its shape and stays together. And now I'm just gonna put a little bit more time over the top. The only thing we have to do now before we bake it is throw it in the freezer for 10 minutes. That will help set the crust and then we will throw it into a 400 degree oven and it will bake for about an hour. Well, I'll be damned. Sam, I didn't know you were in town. When'd you get in? All right, why isn't there a drink in front of you? Bartender, get this man a drink. Whiskey on the rocks. Of course I remembered. How could I forget? Yeah, it was a year ago. That was one incredibly fun night. Cheers. Here's to reconnection. I really missed you, Sam. It smells so amazing right now. This baked for about 15 minutes. I've let it cool for about an hour. I am incredibly hungry and I want to cut into it and eat. Finally, I get to bite into this. I'm so excited. Also, this is literally the perfect slice. It's so beautiful. All right, moment of truth. Wow. The tomatoes are so sweet now. They almost taste like plums. They're still juicy, but it's not like, like drippy juicy. They're so good. And then the cheese, you get these little pops of parm, and then the gruyere on the bottom just almost tastes like, it just tastes nutty and creamy. You need to make this. It's really good, like just barely warm, but it's also good room temperature, serve it for a party, make a couple of them. It's like super easy. And if you like me and my new boyfriend and you like this recipe, you like this series, you can hit like and subscribe and you will be notified as soon as there's another Sweet Heat episode.